G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video we're going to talk about the upcoming changes to AMP script subject lines in the Summer 22 release notes. I'll talk you through how these subject lines are currently rendered, what's changing in the new release, and some things you can check and change to make sure that your subject lines don't get affected by this update. So to start off with, let's have a look at the Summer 22 release notes. I've put a link to this page in the description below. And if we have a look on the left hand side, we can scroll down in our Summer 22 release notes down to the Email Studio release notes. And the first item is the updated email subject line processing. Now if we click on this blue link here, we can go through to the knowledge article of what's changing in this update. So if we scroll down, we can see that today, the email subject lines are processed twice. And this allows for nested variables, including using AMP script. So let me explain in Marketing Cloud how the send process works. When you hit send on your email, Marketing Cloud is going to render your email to produce your personalization to send to your subscribers. At the moment, Marketing Cloud will render the body of your email first, it will then render the subject line, and then render the subject line a second time. This is why you can declare variables using an AMP script block in your email body, and then use those variables in such a subject line. Now that part isn't changing, what is changing is how the subject line is rendered the second time. What will happen is that your email will render the body as normal, you will then render the subject line once, and then send your email. Which means whatever value is stored in your subject line after that first pass will be sent to your subscribers. And this is the part that you have to check to make sure that your emails won't be impacted by this change. You have to ensure that whatever value is put into your subject line will render correctly after just one pass. So let's talk through this using Salesforce Marketing Cloud. I've got an email here which I've created, and I'm going to go ahead and make some AMP script to create a new subject line. So to start with, I'll make myself a AMP script code block. I'm going to set the variable of subject to be equal to hi. I can then go into my subject line, and I can say subject line is going to be equal to percent percent equals v, and the variable of at subject. As a result, when I render this email, it's going to correctly put in the variable subject rendered as high, because we've set the subject line inside of our body, which will correctly put the string of high inside of our subject line when it renders one pass. So that's fine, but what about if we try and make some more personalized subject lines by including a subscriber's first name? If we go back into my code block, and let's pretend that my subscriber's first name will be a variable called name, and for now I'll call it Cam. So I could instead say, hi Cam. And to do this, I could do it using the current method, allowing me to have a double pass on subject line. So I could say, hi, percent percent equals V, and then use my name variable and do it this way. Unfortunately, this will no longer work once the double pass changes in the new update. So instead we have to include our personalization for first name a different way. We can do this by using the concat function in AMP script. So you could instead write hi space and then our variable name. We can use this inside of a concat function. So we can say concat and inside of our concat we'll have a string called hi and then the next value to concatenate together will be our personalization for our first name, in this case at name. This will then be stored as a subject variable which we then use inside of our subject line. So again this will work in the new update we are only running our body once, taking our name, our first name for our subscriber, and concatenating it into a string, which will produce hi cam, which will then be used inside our subject line as hi cam correctly after just one pass. Let's have one more look, this time using the example provided in the knowledge article. I've taken this AMP script, and inside of my email I've pasted it. Now I've not got a data extension to look up, so instead of looking up a data extension, I'm just going to use the output of televisions, which is the same value provided after the lookup takes place, as you can see here. In my email, I'm also using the at name variable to use the first name attribute in my sendable data extension. Now my subject line currently says hi and then name, which should produce my first name, a comma, and then a subject line. The subject line text will be check out the latest deals on, and then another AMP script value here. If I go and try to render this, it's going to render using the new rules to only pass once. And as you can see, it results with hi Astro, my first name, check out the latest deals on, and then the AMP script. It's not re-rendered that second lot of AMP script. 
So how can we fix this? If we go back into our content, we've got a couple of options available to us. First thing we can try is use that concat function. So rather than saying subject and then producing this string, we can instead use the concat function to join free text along with our variable text. I can do this by saying concat with our free text, removing our variable text, closing off that string and putting our next piece, which is the deal type, just like that. And of course it ends in an exclamation mark. So another comma and then exclamation mark, closing off our concat. And now the variable for subject will be the result of this concat and script function. I can test this by going into my send and preview. And I should now have, there we are. Hi Astro, check out the latest deals on televisions. Now there is one more option available to us. As you can read from the documentation, it is not recommended for most use cases. If we take a look on the knowledge article and we scroll down, you'll find under the further examples, it illustrates the use of the treat as content function. We can use this to force the AMP script to pre-render the content saved within the subject line variable before it renders the rest of the subject line. To show you how that works, we can go back into the email and I've got here my original code. So this would not currently work if I test it now. It'll still show high first name, the single pass worked there, but the second pass did not occur, which means that second AMP script inline code was not rendered. If we go back into our content, we can modify the use of our v function to simply output the value of the subject and instead use the treat as content function. Now by doing this, it's going to force the content saved within the at subject variable to render first and then output that content. You can see here that the value of at subject is of course our free text along with that inline AMP script function. If I test that now, we should produce the correct outcome. Hi Astro, check out the latest deals on televisions. There we go. And again, just a reminder that the treat as content function is not recommended as a solution for this AMP script rule change. It's recommended that you go through and use the concat function to join your strings and variables together as the treat as content function will evaluate the code similar to the eval function in JavaScript, which means whatever code you include in it will be evaluated and run. So if you don't have a clear lineage or a direct path to where that data came from, it's possible for malicious code or other content to be injected into that subject line. So now that we know how subject lines work and how to fix our subject lines to ensure that they do work with a single pass, how do we know if our accounts are affected? So the first thing you can try is go into your Marketing Cloud reports and on the overview, choose under categories, the email category. You then scroll down and choose the recent email send summary. This allows you to make a report which will include the email send date as well as the email subject line. You can check on this report to see which emails may contain AMP script and therefore could be impacted by the AMP script changes. However, if you want to try and find emails that have not yet been sent or that were sent a long time ago, you'll have to use the Content Builder REST API. And when you use this API, you can see from the example payload, the payload will return with a subject line intact. What you could do is you could run through a SSJS function to call the Content Builder API returning all emails subject lines and storing them into a data extension, which you could then export and search for the percent percent symbols for AMP script. And I hope this explanation of the upcoming changes in the summer 22 release has helped you to understand how the new subject line rules for AMP script will impact your emails. If it has, then please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.